Good afternoon. Another beautiful day, so it's going to get colder. Uh, Pastor King is in St. Louis. I think I think he's coming home, him and Amelia, tomorrow. Uh, so I'll be leading the service. We'll obviously have a video message for the sermon. So um, let's see, any other announcements? Otherwise, please feel free to stay for the meal after the service. Uh, tater tot hot dish. Smells good already. So um, let's start out with, I guess we usually, this is the fourth week on uh, reading the Bible reading. There we go. Let's read this together. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. So we'll begin our service with the opening hymn, Glory Be to Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We place our trust in many things and in many people, yet often that trust is misplaced. Things do not work out as we planned, and people may fail us. Where do we place our trust? trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also with him graciously give us all things? Romans 8, 32. God sent his own son to suffer and die on the cross for the sake of our salvation. In him we place our trust, and he will never fail us. God and ask his forgiveness. The Apostle Paul wrote, The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. 1 Timothy chapter 1. God has had mercy on us and sent his Son to be our Savior. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your spirit. Be in our midst, and live in, uh, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Lord, lead us to walk. Almighty God, we place our trust in friends and family, in political leaders and authority figures, Yet sometimes we are disappointed by those in whom we trust. 
Sometimes our trust is misplaced. We trust in you for our eternal salvation through faith in Jesus our Savior. Help us by your spirit to trust you daily in all things and to turn to you with prayer and praise in all of the circumstances of our lives. You have sent your Son to be our Savior, and you will never fail us. Set his cross always before us to guide us in trusting you. Hear our prayer and accept our praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Continue with the next hymn, Lord of Glory, you have bought us. Our Old Testament reading is from Proverbs chapter 3. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. The epistle reading is from 1 Timothy chapter 1. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But I receive mercy for this reason, that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who were to believe in him for eternal life. To the king of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Please rise for the gospel. gospel reading is from John chapter 19. A jar full of sour wine stood there, so they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, it is finished, and he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Please be seated and continue with the sermon hymn, Salvation Unto Us Has Come.
the screens for the sermon. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we continue our Wednesday midweek services guided to the cross, tonight we look at being guided to trust by being guided to the cross. Trust. Trust can be a difficult thing for us to possess these days. We've unfortunately become accustomed to scam artists, persistent telemarketers, all those spam emails that you get, and we tend too often not to trust anyone anymore. We question almost every request. We doubt any claim. So, so it's no wonder that we have problems with trusting what the Bible says and what Jesus says to us about his salvation and the cross. I mean, it sounds counterintuitive at first, doesn't it? Someone dying to bring life, but the more we know our God and the more we come to know our Savior, the, the more it makes sense. We all acknowledge the truth of our sin, that, that we have disobeyed God is, is something we cannot dispute. It's happened and, and we're sorry for all that we've done. The other truth we know is that someone needs to pay for the sins we have committed. There is a penalty for sin, and the penalty is, is death. Right? Scripture makes it very clear in Romans chapter 6, the wages of sin is, is death. We know the Bible to be true and therefore trustworthy. Right? St. Paul assures us of that. All Scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and training in righteousness, that God may be a complete, equipped for every good work. We trust what the Bible says. So it only makes sense that we trust what Jesus says. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly, and, and we trust that he brings life. Jesus said that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, and, and we put our trust in those reassuring words. During Holy Week, Jesus was put before Pontius Pilate and was judged. Pilate asked him if, if he was a king, and Jesus said, You say I am a king. Right? And for this purpose I was born, for this purpose I have come into the world, to bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth listens to to my voice. Jesus makes it obvious that the path that he has taken by God's design is the path of truth, the path of salvation found in his kingship. There is no other truth to listen to, right? He says it, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. At his birth in Bethlehem, the angel declared, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. Jesus says to Martha in no uncertain terms, Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And who, anyone who lives and believes in me will never die. And remember what Martha says, I, I, I believe. I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Do we respond as trustingly as Martha did? Well, the rubber hits the road when we see Jesus nailed to the cross. When we see his head crowned with thorns, when we see the wounds of the whips on his back, can we believe in him and trust in him in all those horrible and painful hours? <clears throat> Many couldn't. They laughed. They ridiculed him, right? Hey, he saved others. He can't save himself. Ah, he's the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross, and then we'll believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now if he desires him. Right? Remember, he said, I am the son of God. Little did they know that in this very act of crucifixion, Jesus was being the king of Israel and the king of us all. He was delivering us from the wrath of God. He was fulfilling his role as the Son of God. It's hard to trust people when they do not follow through with what they said they would do. 
But even though the people at the cross thought that Jesus was a failure who did not live up to his promises, Jesus was actually following through with what God had promised through him. At the moment when Jesus was being crucified on the cross, his glory as the Son of God was being made known. When Jesus said those words, it is finished. When he said those words from the cross, he was announcing that everything had been completed. The plan of salvation appointed to him by his Father to save all people from sin, death, and the devil was over. His innocent suffering and death was over. That I may be his own, live under him and his kingdom, serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Your catechism days. Luther's explanation to the second article. There is great trust in those words and the words we speak in our statements of faith. The Apostles' Creed, the Nicene Creed, the Athanasian Creed, they are our statements of trust. Complete trust. Complete trust that Jesus finished what he started with his birth in Bethlehem by dying in our stead for our sake there on the cross. Yeah, the cross. A symbol, a sign, an indication that, that we trust the Lord with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our mind. The cross. The cross that reminds us that we don't understand fully. But God does. And he knows what is best for us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. Just turn to St. Paul. Turn to St. Paul when you're seeking trustworthy statements about our faith. Right? We preach Christ crucified. A stumbling block to the Jews and folly to the Gentiles, but to those who are being called both Jew and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. We put our trust in what we already know to be powerful and wise. Our God in Christ on the cross. When we don't trust in God, we, we tend to wander around aimlessly, going in different locations. But when we trust in God, when we trust in His Son, Jesus Christ, our path is straight. Straight with a clear direction. A direction that leads us to the cross. Only there is truth found. Only there is trust found. Only there on the cross is that confidence revealed. And then as those who, who trust in the Lord, how are we to live? In a world of doubts and fear and questions, we... You and I, we should be the voice of faith. The voice of calm and the voice of divine answers. We should be the voice of belief in Jesus, the voice of belief in his cross. There, there is no need to look to another. There is nowhere else to seek security or the answers that you need. Everything can be found at the foot of the cross. Be guided to the cross. Trust in Jesus and lead others to trust in him as well. Amen. And the peace of God, the peace that surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in and through Christ Jesus your Lord. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior. All right. We'll continue with the, the Apostles' Creed, so we'll profess our faith with those words. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth.
receive our offerings. We'll continue with our prayers and the responses on the screens as well as in your, your handout. Lord God, in a world where it is hard to know in whom or in what we can trust, we place our trust in you. You always keep your promises. Down through the centuries, the prophets announced your promise to send your anointed one, the Messiah. When the time was right, that promise was fulfilled in Jesus. Our God and Savior, during this Lenten season, Lord God, as Jesus drew near to the hour of his death, he trusted in you, his heavenly Father, to guide his steps to the cross, as the scripture had foretold. We place our trust in Jesus alone for our salvation. Bless and guide us as we take up our crosses and follow our Savior. Our God and Savior, during this Lenten season, Lord God, help those who are struggling with illness, pain, or grief. Comfort them with the promises of your word and lead us to opportunities to serve them in Jesus' name. Our God and Savior, during this Lenten season, Lord God, help us by your spirit to depend on you each day in all of the circumstances of our lives. Teach us not to rely on our own understanding, but to trust in you in all things. We know that you will guide us. Our God and Savior, during this Lenten season, Lord God, as we rely on you for help now in this earthly life, we know that we can trust in you for our eternal salvation through faith in Jesus. Our Lord has promised, surely I am coming soon. We look forward to the fulfillment of that promise and to life in your presence forever. Our God and Savior, during this Lenten season, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Am Trusting Thee, Lord Jesus. <laughs>